taking part of the IELTS exam today. Um, so, the speaking part, as you might be aware, consists of three parts. In the first part, uh, there is introduction and interview, and the examiner asks you questions about you on a range of familiar topics. These topics can include um, your hobbies, your studies or your work, um, your family, your home, uh, your apartment, your house, and things like that. So these, uh, these uh, questions should not be difficult for you. It shouldn't be difficult for you to think of ideas. They should be familiar for you. Um, and uh, you should answer with about three sentences. So you should give an answer and then extend your sentence uh, by giving some details such as for example or because and so on. Uh, part two is a cue card. Uh, this is a card that an examiner gives you. You have one minute to prepare and you should speak for two minutes after this. So um, uh, since we already know all the cards that are used this season, we, uh, as well as part one and part three questions, we're going to practice these topics in our preparation. So um, after this, you receive a number of questions that are based on the topic of your cue card. And this is called part three. Here, uh, you should give more detailed answers, sometimes five or six sentences, and they should be structured. Part three questions are should be answered without preparation. Okay, so uh, as for evaluation criteria, so how are your answers evaluated? There are four groups of criteria, and the first one is fluency and coherence. So fluency, it means you're speaking uh, without stops and hesitations. It's okay to make pauses sometimes if you think for ideas at the end of between sentences. But if you're uh, making pauses in the middle of the sentences because you're thinking of what grammar to use or which word to use, it becomes evident to the examiner and you lose points for fluency. Coherence. This is how your answer is logically organized. So if you uh, connect your ideas with linking devices that were mentioned in the video that we watched, then your coherence uh, score becomes bigger. It improves. Right. As for lexical resource, you should try to use uh, as many different words as possible. Uh, try to use less common vocabulary. So for each topic, I will try to give you uh, less common words that you can use in this or that situation. So this can improve your score for lexical resource. It would be nice if you could use some phrasal verbs and idioms as well. Okay, uh, and one more thing. When you answer a question, try not to repeat the keywords in the sentence. So try to paraphrase the words. For example, do you like music? Well, I'm keen on different types of it, or I'm keen on different types of music. Don't don't repeat. Do you like music? Yes, I like music. Okay. Uh, grammatical range and accuracy. Uh, similar to writing, you need to use a number of different constructions, and you should use them correctly. So these grammar constructions could be conditional sentences. So usually, it's very easy to use a conditional sentence. Then um, it could be inversion. It could be, for example, past perfect continuous. If you're talking about uh, uh, I got a mobile phone as a present, and I had been I had been dreaming of it for many years. So past perfect continuous, for instance, um, or some other uh, difficult pieces of grammar. And pronunciation. So, well, as for pronunciation, you, uh, your speaking should be understood. If you have an accent, it's okay because everybody has an accent. But uh, you should be understood, and your accent should not impede communication. For example, a Russian, uh, Russian students, Russian candidates, sometimes say think instead of think, which are uh, two different words in English. So if you do it like this, then your mark for pronunciation will decrease. Your intonation is also important. It should be natural. Uh, all right. 
So uh, let's start with uh, part one. Uh, I'm going to show you the questions and you will receive this list uh, at the end of the lesson. I will send each of you uh, this list. Uh, let's try to answer. Uh, please remember that uh, you're about to give three or four, two or three sentences in this question. So, uh, Natalia, can we start with you? I will ask you uh, to answer questions about work and, and try to <clears throat> and try to answer with about uh, three sentences. I will turn. Uh, I will offer you uh, to. I will try to turn on the microphone for you. Okay, so you should accept it uh, and uh, try to say something so we can hear you. No? Yes, yes. yes uh, I can yes, hear you. Uh, I can hear okay. Brilliantly. But from what, uh, uh, if it's possible, uh, are you using headphones? Uh, no. Okay, if you if you have them, it would be great for the future. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's let's try now. So, uh, part one questions: uh, Do you work or are you a student? As for me, I work uh, at a private school. I'm a teacher of Russian uh, language and literature, and uh, I uh, prefer to work with children who are three or four years old. Year old. Okay, brilliant. So here uh, you could Im uh, you could improve your answer by using more complicated grammar if you mention how long you have been studying. This is uh, this is pretty much. Uh -huh. uh, can, can, can you use present perfect continuous here? Yes, I have been working for fifteen years at this uh, school, and uh, I would like to say that uh, this school uh, have been has been. Uh, Existing for 20 years in our city. Okay. Uh, why did you choose that job? Uh, because I have uh, chosen this job uh, because I uh, have loved uh, children uh, all my life, and when I was six years old, I decided to be a teacher. Uh, I had thought uh, that I would change it, my decision, but uh, I hadn't. Okay, right. Uh, so I might disappear for, for about five seconds. Don't worry, because I need to, to fix one problem. Okay, so I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I will copy some some pieces of information in the chat uh, for, for you to watch. All right, so let, let's continue. It was brilliant, pre present, past perfect. That's very nice. Okay, uh, do you like your job? Uh, I'm really crazy about my job. Uh, I agree, I'm a great fan of children, and I ad adore my profession very much. Okay, so uh, instead of like, it's possible to say I'm fond of or I'm keen on. I'm writing these expressions uh, in the chat. Okay, so I'm fond of or I'm keen on. Uh, all right. Uh, what was your dream job when you were young? <laughs> when I was young, uh, my dream job was teacher. <laughs> uh, I would like to be a teacher. I and uh, I uh, had never wanted to change it. I have okay. never wanted. Yes, you're going to say I have never wanted. Uh, so, um, what was your dream job? My dream job was. Uh, you're you're actually repeating the question. Okay. Uh, ideally, okay. you can say, for example, I dreamed of and then being a teacher, or I have always dreamed of being a teacher. This construction is in the chat. Okay. I, so uh, I I have been admiring of this uh, profession all my life. 
Brilliant. Without all, I've been admiring this profession. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. What do you like about your studies? Oh, sorry. What do you like about your job? Uh, the thing I like most about my job is communication with children and new ideas that they give me every day when I see them. And uh, okay. I like... Uh, the activity and desires of my children. Okay, so what do you dislike about your job? Uh, the least thing that I like uh, about my job is communicating with my uh, with parents of my children and if I could change it, it I would like uh, to communicate only with children okay brilliant very nice so uh, you could also um, so uh, uh, here Natalia used a cleft sentence what I like about my job or the least thing I like about my job is uh, another way to answer a what do you dislike type of question is using conditional sentences. Uh, for instance, so since I'm a teacher too, I can say that if I were privileged to have only motivated students who always do their homework, that would probably be the most perfect job in this world. So when it's a do what do you dislike, you can also use a conditional sentence. All right, so this would probably be good enough for 6 or 6.5. Uh, thank you, Natalia. I will um, invite you later to do part two card and maybe even two cards. So now I will turn off, turn turn the sound off, uh, and will invite uh, Vitali now. So Vitali, are you ready? Uh, if you have any commentaries or questions while your colleagues are, while your groupmates are answering, you can also write something in the chat. So uh, I'm offering uh, this the microphone for you. Uh, please accept the invitation to join the chat. And uh, your topic will be hometown. Oh, Tell you not yet. We can't hear you. I will try to to invite you again. You should receive an invitation from the system uh, and please accept it. It might take just some time. I can even try to make you a presenter like this. Okay, so Vitaly, you, you can you can try to to connect. I've sent you the invitation. The system should offer. Oh, oh so we can probably see you, but we can, can you say something? So uh, let, let's try to do it with Tatiana, and then uh, we will come back to Vitaly. So Tatiana, I'm sending you the invitation to talk. I'm turning on the microphone for you. Yes, Tatiana, can you say something? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes, I can. Uh, right, so uh, could you please describe your hometown a little? Uh, my hometown is uh, quite a large city. It's uh, 
situated on the north part of Russia. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, quite a commercial area uh, with uh, plenty of um, not skyscrapers, but uh, okay, uh, tall buildings. Uh, ha -ha yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you like your hometown? Mm. Uh, yes. I. Yes, I I enjoy to be in my hometown because it's a quite okay. popular uh, town for tourists. All right. You can also say I'm fond of it. Uh, is it a big city or a small place? Uh, as I told you, it's a, it's a large city with a, uh, a lot of uh, with a lot of number of citizens and uh, quite attractive for foreign tourists. Okay. Uh, how long have you been living in in this uh, hometown? I have been living here for seven years, and I quite and I quite enjoy living here. Okay, brilliant. And uh, do you think you will continue living there for a long time? Well, let me think. Um, if, for example, I uh, I'll find. Um, a high paid job here at uh, appropriate uh, then yes, definitely I will be living here for a long time. All right. Uh, maybe maybe the sound connection wasn't good, but after if you don't will, I th I thought you said I and then you said will. Uh, if you d if you did, you should because it's first conditional. If I find a job and so on. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Nice. So, um, how has your town changed over the last 20 years? Well, what I can say here is that um, what I noticed for recent time is that, okay, okay. Uh, that I met a lot of tourists from different countries that they enjoy to visit my, my city and that um, the main street of the city uh, became quite attractive and uh, now there exists a lot of uh, restaurants and cafes uh, uh, with a lot of, with, with a lot of uh, food from different kinds of food from different cities. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, you can also mention uh, there is an idiom. I've written it in the chat. So uh, either uh, when you answer this question, at every turn there is something. Oh, there, I, I missed. There is uh, at every turn uh, there is something to catch your eye. Uh, you can mention this uh, when you describe your city, or for example, uh, nowadays a lot of new uh, interesting buildings have been built, and virtually at every turn. There is something to catch your eye, so you start speaking idiomatic English, which is which is a, a great advantage. Uh, okay, right. Thank you. So uh, I'll turn off the microphone now, and we'll. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll invite you later when we uh, do uh, part two cards. Uh, okay, so Vitaly, let's try again. Can you say something? I will turn. Well, personally, I can't hear anything. So Vitaly comes from Belarus. It will be very interesting for us to listen uh, about his country. I would be really interested. Uh, 
Okay, all right. So, um, Natalia, let's try one more. Uh, let's try one more uh, part one question with you. Uh, so, I will turn on the microphone for you. It will be about the country. Okay, are you okay. ready? Okay. Uh, right. yes. So, uh, yes. Uh, please tell me a little about your country. I would like to say that my country is really big. Uh, it has different, uh, different types of uh, weather, different types of um, agricultural system. There are a lot of uh, big uh, cities and small towns. Uh, there are some uh, cities where a population is more than one million people. And I would like to say that uh, uh, most of people who were born in our city are proud of our city. I think that it's uh, famous all over the world for its literature, music, uh, ballet, architecture, and Brilliant. but that, that's enough. Uh -huh. for, for, part, for part one, that's enough because you'll be stopped here. Uh, this word that I have written in the chat is pronounced ballet. Uh -huh. uh, the rest is brilliant. Yeah, um, you, uh, if you want, you could also mention that Russia is the largest country in the world, occupying about one sixth of the world's surface. Yes, uh, it's largely it's just an idea. Of course, you don't have your your answer is also uh, is, is also wonderful. But if, for example, Tatiana Vitali uh, would like to use other ideas to answer this question, you can also mention that it's largely an industrial co uh, country and one of uh, uh, one of the uh, most developed world's economies, even if it's not true, you just you, uh, it's a language test, not not economy or history test. Uh, so uh, you can also say that the country is so large that it encompasses a uh, hopping nine time zones and has a variety of climates from 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 uh, permafrost regions. I will. It's a quite a rare word. So perma, permafrost regions. Uh, in the north to a subtropical climate, like Crimea, subtropical climate, uh, in the south. Okay, so uh, which part of your country do most people live in? Uh, I think that's uh, the central part uh, and cities uh, around, the Mos around Moscow. Okay. Uh, One because, more uh, because, uh, because more than nine million people live in, in Moscow, and uh, that's uh, the sixth part of all population of Russia. Okay, right. Sometimes the, uh, you can receive a question for which you do not know the exact answer, and that's okay. So you can say, as far as I know, you can yes, I can say. As far as I know, for instance, you can say that 10% of uh, the country's entire population live just in one city, which is Moscow. Yes, it is an interesting fact, taking into account that Russia is the largest country in the world. And the second most populated city is St. Petersburg. Uh, both Moscow and St. Petersburg are attractive to people because there are jobs on offer. Yes, you can all say jobs on offer. Uh, uh, more, more. There are more jobs on offer than in other cities. So this might be also be an idea. Then that's that's more than enough. And your answer as well is just perfect. So, uh, okay, right. Where is your country located? It is located in uh, Europe and Asia continent in the central part of it, uh, from the North Sea to the middle part of this continent. Okay. Uh, you could also mention, uh, it's a question that is not included here, but sometimes I ask you additional questions just to expand your answer. What countries does Russia border? Uh, as far as I know, it uh, borders with uh, Belarus, with the uh, Czech Republic, or with, uh, with uh, China. China. And some are um, ex uh, Republic of uh, the USA. Oh, sorry, USSR. 
Yes. Right. So as for borders, um, you say it borders China without preposition. But you can say, uh, when you're talking figuratively, uh, you can say it borders on madness. So then you say on. But uh, if it is uh, just ge geography, then it's borders on uh, madness. Here you can also mention, I'm not good at geography. It's also a nice expression. Even if you are, you can say that you aren't. Uh, so, all right. Um, nice. Okay, so um, tell me about the main industries in your country. As far as I know about uh, the main industries in my country, I think that uh, they uh, are building, uh, chemistry industry. Uh, Cosma building. Um, no, they are not the main. Uh, but it, is, it doesn't matter. You can say that it is. D don't worry about so uh, about facts. Just it should be logical, and that's it. Uh, one expression that you can um, that you can mention is that uh, the Russian economy relies heavily on, for example, agriculture. This is a phrasal verb that you can use here. Uh, so the Russian economy relies heavily on and there is agriculture or you can say unfortunately we live in the 21st century but Russian economy still relies heavily uh, on agriculture uh, you can also say that as far as far as I can judge because you're not an expert so as far uh, as far as I can judge uh, the most lucrative sector is manufacturing lucrative it means where where there is most money uh, so the most lucrative sector is manufacturing. Uh, so, or you can say that uh, Ru Russia is one of the world's biggest producers of what? So Russia is one of the uh, biggest producers. Uh, so Natalia, are you with us? Uh, yeah, yes, I am with you, <laughs> but I need to open my door. Ah. <laughs> okay. That's okay. <laughs> Do you need to, to leave for a minute? Yes, just uh, just thirty seconds. <laughs> okay. Right. So uh, let me just gi give you an example of how how I would answer this question. I would say like, well, as far as I can judge, the most lucrative sector is manufacturing. It seems that. Uh, goods uh, that aren't produced in Russia simply don't exist and Russia is one of the world's biggest producers of and you can mention potatoes or whatever uh, so the, domi um, uh, the dominant uh, which is the dominant agricultural product and besides uh, Russia grows wheat uh, peanuts beans and whatever whatever you might mention okay uh, so the next question would be, uh, what are some of the good things and some of the bad things um, about uh, living in your country? So uh, one of the ways to, to say this is that uh, I think the greatest problem is probably uh, poverty. Yes, this is what you can mention. Uh, yes, Tatiana, lucrative means uh, well paid, where, where there is a lot of money in the sector of industry. So you can say, um, he has got a lucrative job. It means uh, his job is well paid. Or you can say, not only is, is his job uh, lucrative, but it's also very interesting. OK, so uh, to answer this question, um, what, are some of the, so, uh, what are some of the good things and some of the bad things about living in your country? You can say that I think the, great, uh, the greatest uh, problem is poverty. Many people have very low incomes, so they, they can uh, hardly, uh, how would you say свести концы с концами? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, they can hardly uh, make ends meet, yes. And uh, this resort to committing crimes, resort to uh, committing crimes. For example, yes, because so uh, now now there are a lot of poor people. There is a lot of poverty. The the, the, great, the greatest problem is the poverty. Uh, so some people can hardly make ends meet. 
and uh, this makes people resort to committing crimes in a desperate attempt to survive. Here's one. В отчаянной попытке выжить. In a desperate attempt to survive. So, the, the, uh, if you wish, you can use these expressions. Uh, and, uh, well, the good thing is probably, and you can mention. Okay, so, uh, Natalia, if you are ready, uh, the question is, what are some of the good things and some of the bad things about living your country? If you wish, you can use my expressions. If you, if you want, you can use your own ideas and expressions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> okay, but I must. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can you can say that the biggest problem is poverty. Poverty. This is when uh, people there are a lot of poor people, uh, and so people can hardly make ends meet. So uh, and th th this makes them resort to committing crimes in a desperate attempt to survive. You already have these expressions in the chat. Okay, so okay. let's try. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the the points that I like most about my country is uh, our culture, because uh, we are proud of our literature and music, and uh, the names of Tchaikovsky, Pushkin, uh, or Vasilsov are famous all over the world. But the thing uh, that uh, we are not proud uh, is poverty, because most of people in my country can hardly make uh, ends meet, and uh, and there are a lot of uh, uh, problems uh, which are connected uh, with money and uh, people low income. Okay, right. So you can mention here unemployment uh, and a lot of homeless people or homelessness. Yes, uh, homeless people, uh, or homelessness, yes, and unemployment could be mentioned here too. Right, thank you. So I will turn off the microphone. Uh, let's try to speak to Vitaly. Just one second. So uh, I'm turning on the microphone for you, Vitaly. I hope your laptop will work this time. So uh, all the, train. the, uh, the topic is going to be uh, houses and flats. Or home, actually. The official name is home. So Vitaly, are you with us? Okay, but uh, we still can't hear you. Do you have problems with sound? Do you still have them? Okay, uh, so let's try. Hello? Oh, yes, yes, now we can hear you. Uh, brilliant. Yes, I really wanted to hear about Belarus because it's a different country, but anyway, uh, let's talk about your home. So, uh, can you describe the place where you live? Uh, I live in Minsk, uh, I live in the capital of Belarus. Um, I live in my flat. I live with my uh, girl. Uh, my parents uh, live uh, from uh, uh, 60 kilometers from Minsk. Uh, the name of the city is Maladeshna. Um, and uh, every week I uh, visit my parents. And uh, tomorrow okay. I am going to visit my parents. Uh, right. So, uh, uh, do you live in a house or a flat? Flat. Flat. Uh, I live in flat. So, it's not enough. So, uh, try to expand your answer. In the chat, you can see an example of how you can expand your answer. Uh, you can. Uh, it's very nice that you also um, talked about present and future. Like, I'm going to visit my parents uh, tomorrow as well. Um, you can say, I used to live and mention some type of building, some type of accommodation. Uh, so this example is in the chat. Uh, I used to live in a detached house in the suburbs of 
for example, Minsk. However, my current accommodation is a small flat in a residential area in Maladezhnaya. Uh, I've been living there for the last couple of years, and the area I live in has got superb transport infrastructure and something like this. So can you start with, I used to live in some other part, then say that now your current accommodation is this, and you have been living there present perfect continuous. Let's make three sentences. Uh, I, I, I used to, I used to, uh, it's located, uh, uh, 60 kilometer from uh, capital city of Belarus, uh, Minsk. Uh, however, my uh, 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 current accommodation is um, flat uh, uh, in uh, Minsk. Uh, I have been living uh, there for three years, and I like this uh, city because uh, it's uh, there are. Uh, uh, very big uh, transport in infrastructure. Very nice. Uh, what can you see from the windows where you live? Um, I live uh, uh, Park of Victory. I see Park of Victory. Okay. There, there is um, a very nice expression. My okna выглядывают. Uh, my windows look out upon, it's a phrasal verb, so you can say my windows look out upon Victory Park and I can enjoy, how do you say, живописный? Maybe. Maybe. It's, you can see it in the chat, picturesque, mm -hmm. and I can enjoy uh, the picturesque view of the park. So can you, can you repeat again, what can you see from the windows where you live? My win window uh, look out uh, upon the Victory Park and I enjoy yeah. picturesque. Picturesque, 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 nature, a view of the nature. I can enjoy the uh, picturesque uh, view. Uh, mm -hmm. View of view of the nature. The nature. Okay. So, um, what do you like about your flat? What do, um, I like? Uh, what, I like. What do you like? Um, I like. Um, I like my flat uh, uh, located uh, on uh, five, five, five stage. Stage uh, on the fifth uh, on the fifth floor. Ah, uh, fifth, fifth floor, and, and um, it's very. Very, mm, it's very, very quiet. Quiet. It's very quiet because uh, because my uh, my uh, if you don't know how to say something, how to say? I I forgot. Uh, 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 neighbor. Neighbors. I a neighbor, neighbor. Uh, my neighbor is a, a good people, a, a good people, and uh, we uh, we uh, visit uh, different um, uh, different uh, uh, parts, uh, different parts together, and uh, and also um, I like my dog, <laughs> and. He, and all right, all right. Um, uh, so the, the, what, what about, uh, about, uh, about uh, right? So um, instead of saying I like my flat, I've written this in the chat. You can uh, I've written this in the chat. You can say what I particularly like is the fact that my flat is located in the center of the city or in the downtown. Downtown. It's another word for city center. Downtown. Okay. Uh, you can also say what, what, what I especially, especially or particularly like is that my flat reflects my personality. If it doesn't matter if it's true or false, you can just mention this expression. Uh, so it reflects my uh, personality. Um, uh, so uh, you can also say that uh, on top of that, it gives me this the feeling. Uh, it gives me gives me uh, the feeling. Uh, 
of stepping uh, into a safe and personal refuge. So, uh, my flat gives me the feeling of stepping into a safe and personal refuge. If you memorize this expression, that will be very nice. Uh, by the way, the first topics that we um, are discussing, uh, so it's um, your job, your studies, your home, your family, and one more, what is it? Have a look. So, that's a work, hometown, country, uh, and home uh, are used... Uh, in 95, also one of these topics will be used for 95% of candidates. So it's very useful to pay special attention to these topics. So, um, right, so it gives me the feeling of stepping into a safe and personal refuge. You can also mention uh, a, a proverb, as the proverb goes, or as the proverb says, uh, my home is my castle. You can also mention this. So if you use proverbs, uh, ed idioms, that's also very nice. Okay, so uh, which room does your family spend most of the time in? My family? Uh because uh, my family in uh, okay uh, my my family has uh, spent uh, most of time in uh, don't stop you should st you should speak non stop uh, don't worry if you if you're telling the truth uh, or not room, uh, room uh, for relax room for relax where uh, situated uh, tv and uh, radio and uh, um, Aquarium, aquarium, and aquarium, okay. fish, and, fish, and, uh, fish tank, uh, fish tank, yes. fish tank, mm. uh, fish tank. Okay, so uh, it's called the living room or the sitting room. Yes. Even if you say the toilet, just don't stop. Uh, you should sp speak non-stop, uh, and your vocabulary, your language is evaluated, and your fluency, and not what you are saying, but how you are saying this. Okay. Uh, do you prefer uh, living uh, in uh, a house or a flat? Uh, I, I prefer uh, live in house because uh, when I was uh, a child, uh, I live in house and uh, it's good for me and it's uh, comfortable. Uh, and uh, because uh, uh, firstly, uh, first of all, um, nature, uh, you constantly uh, talking to nature and uh, and uh, um, free uh, free free uh, and uh, also exist free uh, air and uh, it's uh, good for my health and uh, good for for my family also and this okay, is instead of, uh, instead of it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a major reason. It's the main reason. Uh, yes, instead of saying and, 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 you, you can say on top of that or in addition. Right. You, you can also say, so uh, instead of I prefer, you can say I would rather live in the house uh, because I can do almost anything with, without disturbing other people. For instance, I can dance, I can shout, and I can sing. And on top of that, I can enjoy some fresh air, and so on. It's very good for my, which is very good for my health, or it's, which is beneficial for my health. Okay, uh, right. So, uh, what are other questions? Uh, what would you like to change in your flat? Mm. Mm. Uh, I, I like. Uh, I like. Uh, I like. Change uh, my uh, different uh, things in my room because I want to buy uh, a big TV. Uh, now is uh, 22, uh, 20, uh, 28 uh, uh, diagonal, and uh, I prefer a, a, a big TV. Uh, for, for instance, I want. Uh, um, fi, fi, uh, 
50, about 50 Diganas, and also I uh, plain, um, I plain uh, have uh, a new uh, computer for my work because a uh, certain uh, computer is um, is not uh, perfect. Uh, because uh, I, uh, I every uh, every day I pro pro program and uh, I need um, I need, uh, I need, uh, need to have a, a very um, very uh, perfectly perfectly, perfectly uh, station station okay perfect station and uh -huh. right and perfect station and uh, just... also I plan uh, to buy a, uh, fish tank. Uh, tank. Tank. Fish tank. No, it's not tank. Fish tank. Fish. Fish tank. Uh -huh. Okay, you can also say, um, you can also say, I would like to breathe more life into my flat by hanging some paintings on the walls or putting potted plant on the windowsill. So if anybody likes this idea, you can memorize it and use it for your answer. Right? Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let's do uh, one more uh topic with Tatiana that will be about family. So Vitaly, I will turn you off now, then I will turn you on again. Okay. So can you send us a list of useful expressions on the topic? So should we write them only from the chat? Uh, Natalia, I will uh, write, I will send you uh, both the expressions. Uh, ideally, while you're listening, uh, if you have an exercise book and if you write down these expressions, it's very nice for your memory because uh, while you're writing, you start memorizing these expressions. Uh, I will send you all the materials that I have that will be uh, expressions, some of the sample answers, uh, and some of the um, audio recordings where I answered the same questions myself. But uh, also during the lesson, please also copy all these expressions because some of them uh, I say, uh, well, I already have them written down, but some of them are just my reactions to what a person is saying. And if you like this expression, if you think you will use it in the future, if you have this question, it's a good expression for you, then also please do it at the same time. But at the end of the lesson, yes, after the lesson, I will also send you uh, a list of expressions for each of the topics. Uh, right. So, uh, yes, great. Tatiana, I'm turning on the microphone for you. Uh, please uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, tell me a little about your family, please. Uh, well, I have a quite standard Russian family and I live in my nuclear family, uh, which consists of me, my husband and my son. Uh -huh, thank you. Very nice. So uh, Tatiana used here nuclear family. Nuclear family means, if you don't know, it's just parents and children. You can also have a term extended family, means your grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles and aunts. Very good. Uh, so uh, let's imagine that uh, you didn't have the first. So uh, if you have here like hyphen, it means the examiner only asks you one of these questions. So uh, let's imagine that I didn't ask you the previous question. So you can repeat any information. Mm -hmm. So how many people are there in your family? Uh, well, my family consists of me, my husband, and my son. Okay, brilliant. And one more. Uh, again, let's imagine that there was nothing before. It's the first question. Do you have a large family? Uh, no, I don't have a large family. And uh, my family is a nuclear family. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you get on well with your family? Do you know this expression, get, get on well? It means to have a good relationship, like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, what I can say here, frankly speaking, I could say that we are really on each other and we have one strong relationship uh, uh, between each uh, family member. Mm -hmm. Right. You can also mention an expression, we are deeply attached to each other. Uh, it's, it would be uh, nice to use here for paraphrasing. Okay, so what do you like doing together? Well, when we have um, 
when we have a, a free time, usually we hanging uh, we hanging out together, going to the park and spend uh, our time together, sitting in the cafe or watching uh, TV in the cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, here you can start your answer with this. Uh, whenever we have a spare moment, whenever we have a spare moment, right? Uh, okay, right. Uh huh. Uh, you can say we do. Um, for instance, we go to the restaurant and we talk, and we uh, how do you say ubi du zaitsev adnim udaram? Do you know? Uh, you can say we kill two birds with one stone. Sometimes we go to restaurants and we have an opportunity to talk. So we kill two birds with one stone. It's a very, very nice uh, idea to, to, to use it here. Uh, all right. Thank you. So uh, this is the uh, the end of this topic. So I will turn uh, the microphone off for you for now. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Well, let's move on to part two. Uh, so today we'll probably, uh, let's try to do at least three uh, cards for part two. Um, so Natalia, the first one is going to be for you. And basically, uh, each of you has got a minute to prepare now. So, Natalia, for you, that will be activity your friend has done, but you haven't. Describe an interesting activity your friend has done, but you haven't, and you want to try. You should say uh, what activity it was, when it was, why you haven't done it, why do you want to try it. Okay, and that's it so far. Um, you can talk about, for example, snowboarding, live boarding and so on. Uh, I will talk a, li a little bit about this before you actually start. I will give you some vocabulary that you can um, that you can use. So uh, for Vitali, your um, your card will be this: an activity to concentrate. Describe something you do to keep you concentrated. You should say what it is, how often you do it, when you started doing it, uh, why it helped you uh, concentrate. So uh, what you can talk uh, he about here, so if you don't know what to talk about, uh, you can say that is, for example, yoga or meditation uh, or, well, some uh, sitting still in a chair or, or maybe going for a walk. Well, that's all I can think of, um, how you can uh, concentrate. So you will, you will have more than a minute because you will speak after Natalia. I will try to... Uh, let me try to copy. Okay, I will try to copy the um, the um, expression, the the task in the chat in just a second, so you can copy it for yourself. Uh, Tatiana, for you, the card will be this. Uh, activity you do when you're alone. Describe an activity you would do when you're alone in your free time. And you should say what the activity is, how often you do it, uh, where you do it, how you do it, and why you like it. So, uh, for Natalia, this is, the, this is the task. I will copy this in the chat. If you find a, a way to copy it, please copy it. Uh, okay, you can make screenshot, no problem. So here, here it is for you. Mm -hmm. So describe something you do to keep you concentrated. You should say what it is, how often you do it, when you started doing it, and why it helps you concentrate. So are you ready with a screenshot? Uh, you will receive all these questions at the uh, after the lesson with ideas and expressions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, and Tatiana, for you, that's activity you do when you're alone. Describe an activity you do when you're alone in your free time. You should say what the activity is, how often you do it, where you do it, how you do it, and why you like it. Okay, so uh, uh, if I have this in this program, no, I don't seem to have it. I'll upload it from my computer so we can, yes.
Natalie, you actually have more than one minute, uh, and I will also give you some ideas on, on uh, what you can say in just a minute because uh, this pro this uh, is converting my file into a presentation. Okay, so uh, here are pieces of uh, vocabulary that you can use. You can, if you are talking about some activity that involves equipment. You can mention gear or piece of gear. And when you learn something, you can say to get the hang of something. It means to master, to learn uh, to learn some kind of a skill. Uh, what kind of activity you can mention? Uh, it can be, for instance, skydiving, race car driving, riding a horse, flying a kite, kite, jumping with a parachute, water skiing, diving. Only one is enough, of course scuba diving, snorkeling, when you have a special tube and you um, swim with uh, with a snorkel. So surfing, windsurfing, stand up, paddle boarding, when you paddle uh, and you stand up, fly boarding, doing a bungee jump, bungee cord jumping. So uh, you can mention one of these activities or your own ideas if you feel more comfortable. Uh, when you did it, it's, it's very easy. It can be recently, just a while ago, a couple of months ago, some days ago, just a couple of days ago, several days ago, a long time ago. Then, why you haven't done it? Here are some expressions. Uh, I have a number of health problems that make me an unsuitable candidate for this activity. I was afraid, for instance, to get injured, to have a heavy blow to the head, to break a leg or arm, or to twist an ankle. Um, so to get spine and neck injuries, to damage my spinal cord, to break a bone, to have a fracture, to sprain an ankle, uh, I, I would be unable to breathe, I would have a heart attack or a stroke. And this one is very nice. My eyeballs would pop out of their sockets. You could also use this expression. Uh, I didn't have enough money on me. I wasn't fit enough at the time. I have an intense fear of heights, if you're jumping with a parachute. Uh, there were a age and weight limits if you didn't fit into them. I didn't fall into the age and uh, weight limits. Why do you want to try it? So here are the expressions. Uh, one or two, you can use one or two of these expressions. I want to experience something exciting. I want to get the adre adrenaline pumping through my body. It's absolutely different from the activities I've done to date. It's interesting to try something new. I want to beat my friend who says I won't be able to do so. I wonder whether I will be capable of mastering it. I want to understand whether it's difficult, whether it's as difficult as it seems. Uh, if you decide to talk about flyboarding, I believe it's a lot of fun flying above the water. Or I'm sure nothing can be compared to floating underwater and seeing the beautiful fish, corals, and wrecks. Wrecks, this is a, this is a ship that uh, sank after the shipwreck. Okay, so Natalie, if you are ready. Uh, if you're ready, uh, I can turn on the microphone for you and please speak for about uh, two minutes. You can use any of the expressions that I showed you, um, <clears throat> any of your own ideas. Okay, shall I start? Okay. Shall I start? Uh, uh, yes, just one second. And uh, while you while you're Can you hear me? yes, yes. And uh, uh, so uh, before you start, I will copy uh, for Tatiana will copy the card. Just uh, so Tatiana, for, for you the card uh, is in the chat. Uh, yes, please do. Should I start or should I wait? Should I start or should I wait? Uh, uh, yes, now please start if you are ready. Okay, uh, two weeks okay. ago, my friend tried uh, mountain climbing. At that time, I uh, have a lot enough money on me, and uh, I thought that I wasn't ready to do that. <laughs> but uh, my friend explained me that uh, it was something new that I had never tried in my life. And that, um, uh, I thought uh, that uh, this type of activity is connected only with uh, physical, only with uh, physical, 
physical activity uh, but she explained me that it can be connected uh, with some psychological aspect uh, because uh, uh, there is uh, on the mountain uh, a person can uh, meet uh, some problem and uh, the way uh, how he can avoid this uh, situation is uh, like a way uh, how uh, this person avoid the situation in his real life. So this uh, activity uh, in the open air is uh, connected not only with uh, physical but also with your emotional uh, body. Okay, thank you. Uh, right, so uh, didn't have much money on me. It's just uh, when somebody explains, uh, so I have written uh, the corrections in the chat. In the chat, when somebody explains, you say he, he or she explained it to me. They didn't. For, if you say explained me, uh, it means explained what kind of person you are. It's just a little bit different. Uh, he explained to me that this is type of activity that I had never tried before. He explained. That's why it's past perfect. Okay, uh, then here's a good word you might use is uh, physical preparedness, like physical preparation. Uh, and you can say meet a problem, but of course um, come across or confront or face a problem would sound better if you said it. Uh, then uh, you said not only, so it's not only about a physical uh, aspect of your life, but also about mental or emotional, psychological. Can you put not only in the beginning of the sentence and make inversion here? Uh, not only is it connect. Uh, not is only it is uh, not physical only activity, is but physical also an emotional aspect. aspect. An emotional aspect. All right, all right, brilliant. Uh, can you make a third conditional here? If I, uh, uh, если бы я не отправилась в эту поездку, то тогда бы что-то еще произошло. If I hadn't uh, gone, if I hadn't uh, gone, uh, if I had uh, gone there with him, I would have uh, would have um, met a new world. <laughs> A new world. Okay, I would have would discovered have a new world for me. I would, uh, I would have discovered, discovered a, new, a new world for me. A new world for me. Okay, right. Uh, here is my story, uh, and you will receive it. Uh, each of you will receive it uh, after the webinar. Uh, here, you, uh, I used s several uh, words like hose and propulsion. They are very difficult. So. Um, this is the story. Since my holiday a couple of years ago, I had an overwhelming desire to try fly boarding. So if you decide to take any ideas from here, please do. Uh, as the name suggests, it's like flying on, a water, on water pressure. Basically, what you do is that you stand on a board, which is connected to a watercraft. It's like a ship or boat, by means of a very, very long hose. The water for, watercraft gives the flyboard propulsion, so you can move underwater and fly above the water. First, I saw a video on Vkontakte, which is a Russian social networking system, and this video really impressed me. Then I was on holiday in Yalta last, last year or last month, it depends on when I tell the story, and my friend suggested trying this activity. Of course, I agreed without hesitation, but later I understood that I wasn't a suitable candidate for this activity, so I refused. The main reason is that I didn't want to get injured and spend several months in hospital just because I wanted to jump like a dolphin for 15 minutes. And at that time, I wasn't fit enough. This meant I wouldn't be able to control my body and movements. On top of that, I was afraid to damage my spine cord and break bones. However, my biggest fear was to have a heavy blow to the head. I saw people fell down 100 times before they were able to flyboard properly. Uh, uh, so, uh, what's more, flyboarding lessons cost a pretty penny, so I couldn't afford them. If I had spent so much money, I would have spent the rest of my holiday starving or dying of hunger. So I refused, but my friend didn't, and it looked really impressive. On returning home, I decided to go to the local gym to get fitter. Here, two minutes would would finish probably, but uh, just just in case, because at an exam, maybe I will not remember, for example, all the ideas. It will be shorter in real life. I also decided to save money for it and uh, try it, as it is absolutely different from all the activities I have done to date. 
I think there are only three things I will have to think of. First of all, I will have to get in good physical shape. Secondly, I will have to rent gear such as flyboard, wets, wetsuit, helmet, and life jacket. Uh, but it is not a problem uh, as most training locations can provide all of this. Finally, I will have to learn some basic maneuvers and learn to operate a flyboard. But people say that it only requires a short period of training to get started, so it won't be an issue either. Now I'm looking forward to my summer holidays, as I'm sure it is a lot of fun uh, flying above water like Superman, let alone the thrill of getting the adrenaline pumping through my body. Also, I wonder whether I will be capable of mastering it and whether it's as difficult as it seems. So in your materials, you will also receive another sample answer for this, which I found on the internet. Uh, so you, you'll, you'll have a chance to read it. After part two, uh, there are some part three questions. Uh, so Natalia will ask you to uh, to answer these questions. Just let me let me check what the topic is. Uh, new things. Okay. So so so. Just one second. I will open the questions. Uh, this is part three. So try to answer with. Um, with about, well, four or five sentences. Uh, is it good for people to try new things? As for me, I think that it's really good for people to try it's new really things good. because uh, when people uh, begin doing some new things, they can open something new inside of them and they know uh, the way where they can uh, go on with uh, their physical or emotional uh, physical activity. Okay, right. You can also say it uh, broadens their horizons or expands their horizons or gives their soul a boost. Uh, they can also discover unknown talents. Oh, one more expression and idea. Discover uh, unknown talents. Okay, brilliant. Um, so, why are some people afraid of trying new things? Uh, my mind, uh, I think that they're afraid uh, because uh, somebody uh, should know absolutely everything about the thing uh, he's going to try. And if uh, he knows uh, nothing, he doesn't want uh, to try these new things. Uh, maybe he uh, is afraid uh, to open something new inside of himself. Mm -hmm. Right. You can also say that they are afraid to be outside their comfort zone. Um, and you can say that some kind of action, they are afraid that some kind of action uh, will uh, produce an intolerable uh, immediate outcome. So it means some a negative result. They are afraid of negative results, and you can say it, they some kind of their action will produce an intolerable immediate outcome. Intolerable immediate, they're two separate words. Uh, right, thank you. So, the next one. Um, what help do people need when they are trying new things? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes, sure. Uh, by the way, at, at an IELTS exam, well, it's not going to be by Skype or by some webinar, so you'll, you'll hear better. But at a real exam, you can ask the examiner to repeat. There's no problem with that. Um, you, but you, you can only ask once, because if you ask for the second time, the examiner will just move on to the next question, just for your information. So what help do people need when they are trying new things? <laughs> As for me, I think that the biggest uh, help they need is psychological help uh, because it's uh, the main force uh, that should help them uh, to overcome uh, their fears. Mm -hmm. overcome, yes, very good. Overcome, uh, overcome their fears. That's a very good uh, expression overcome their fears. So you can also say that they need, you said psychological help, but I would recommend to, to uh, change it to support, psychological uh, support. Uh, and they need uh, trust uh, in their ability, abilities, uh, trust in their uh, abilities to pull through. To pull through means to be successful. 
to pull through. Uh, or, and you will receive it in your uh, materials, they need praise, похвала, they need praise uh, even for little accomplishments, достижения. So this is one more expression that you can uh, use to answer this question. Uh, right, so two more. Uh, what, uh, so at a real exam, you, maybe you will not have all the five, all the five questions, maybe just three. But so I will ask you all just in case. Uh, what are some of the difficulties a person might have when they try something new? Uh, sorry, should I uh, answer in another sorry, way? Uh, answer in another way? Uh, so the, the previous question was what help do people need when they're trying new things? And here, what are some of the difficulties a person might have when they try something new? Uh, I believe that uh, you'll be asked only one of these questions, so you can repeat the idea, but I think the wording, the words of your answer will be different this time. Um, um, firstly, they uh, need praise uh, for their first steps, uh, which can support them in their uh, uh, way when they are going on when they with this uh, new way and new, this, uh, new way uh, world. world. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also mention that they are afraid to commit a mistake, to get hurt, or to lose their confidence. Uh, okay. And the last question: Do you think it's better to have a new experience when you are young or when you are older? As for me. Uh, is for all me, uh, ages are suitable for opening uh, the new situation and uh, new experience because uh, people uh, should uh, uh, continue uh, forming their ability all their life and uh, should uh, uh, be changed during the life because uh, their personality is not a constant uh, one. Okay. Uh, you can also mention that uh, some people uh, make a conscious decision uh, to stop learning when they're old. Well, not all, but some people do. Right. Thank you, Natalia. That's that's it for this card. Now we'll come to Vitaly. There's something wrong with my computer that I can't turn. Oh, there we go. So, Vitaly, I have turned on the microphone for you. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, yes, we can hear you, so if you, okay. yes, an activity to concentrate. So if you are ready, uh, please start. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, talking uh, about uh, concentrating, uh, I used to, I used to yoga, and now for concentrating I use meditation. Uh, because uh, I read lots about it, and uh, first of all, it's very useful for my health, for all, every, everybody. And uh, also, I would like to say I prefer uh, do it on uh, nature, uh, exactly uh, near forest. Uh, my pose uh, is to sit and um, to, to, to dream. Um, about sea and uh, birds in the sky. And also, uh, I advise all, uh, if you have stressful, uh, use meditation. Uh, I have uh, I have been uh, using uh, meditation for five years, and um, I would like to say uh, that I am beginning doing from a YouTube video, and uh, then uh, read about uh, a lot, uh, read uh, a lot of about it, and uh, so on. Mm. And uh, um, tomorrow, 
uh, I'm going to use meditation uh, because uh, I'm so tired last week. I'm so tired last week. I was. Or I am tired after the after the previous week. Uh -huh. So, uh, right. Uh, okay, would you like to say anything else? Finish, mm. mm. maybe. Okay, okay. So, uh, is it important for children to learn how to concentrate? Yes. Um, um, yes. Um, um, I suppose uh, when uh, you uh, are concentrated, uh, you uh, you can uh, learn uh, uh, very very productive. Very productive. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. You can also say that concentration is a gateway to all thinking, to all thinking, memory, learning, and so on. And you can also say that is a very important cognitive skill. What do you comment? Cognitive So if you mention this expression, that would be great. Uh, what can? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So if you if you say there's a very important co cognitive skill. The examiner will think, wow, he's, he knows such words. So, um, what can employers do to help employees concentrate? Sorry, uh, what? Sorry, uh, what? Uh, what can employers, means the bosses, what can employers do to help employees concentrate? Uh, I think mm, employers have to do it uh, five minutes uh, meditation uh, every day, and uh, your uh, personal uh, improve uh, improve. Uh, Meditation um, skills, uh, cognitive skills, and uh, will help uh, in uh, your work, uh, in them, their work. Okay. In them, their work. Their work. Uh, okay, right. So um, it, sometimes you have su su some questions. If you don't know them before the exam, it might be difficult to think, to think of some ideas, right? So here, you, uh, my idea is that. Uh, I've written this in the chat. Uh, you can, uh, uh, employers or bosses can create a comfortable uh, work environment with minimal distractions. Uh, and instead of saying, I think, try to avoid it and try to say, I'm convinced from my point of view, in my opinion, and so on. So uh, what else can uh, they do? They can uh, create goals for the day. Okay. They can uh, uh, discourage multitasking. Работа режим многозадачности. Discourage multitasking. Try, try to avoid. Try to uh, 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 so try to uh, to work without it. Yes, to uh, discourage multitasking and so on. Uh, or, uh, they should block social networking sites, for example, in their company. Uh, this can be ideas you could you could, you could mention here. Uh, all right, then the next one. Uh, what kinds of jobs require higher concentration at work? Of course, what programming. Uh, I'm programming and uh, concentrate help me uh, in uh, into uh, into uh, into into decide uh, right decision. Decide uh, maybe right. uh, engineer and uh, maybe uh, engineer. Mm -hmm. D different rules of uh, companies. Different rules of uh, companies. Head. Uh, I, I mean, uh, so I ch uh, chef, I mean of uh, chef of company. Company. Top managers. Yes. Top managers. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, I've written. Top managers. Yes, I've written five jobs uh, that require concentration. You can mention they are accountants because they work with l large amounts of money. Uh, architects. They project buildings. Uh, proofreaders, they read books for mistakes. Uh, surgeons, they uh, operate on people. It's very important to be concentrated. Just imagine a surgeon who is not concentrated. Pharmacists, because they uh, have to uh, produce medicine. 
uh, okay, and you can say that um, all jobs where people must pay attention to details uh, require concentration. I could give an example like programmer, accountant, architect, proofreader, surgeon, and so on. Okay, the next one. Uh, have you ever felt difficult to concentrate? Hello, Vitaly, are you there? So, Vitaly seems to have disappeared, so I'll answer myself. Um, so, uh, have you ever felt uh, difficult to concentrate? Well, I have, and not once to my regret. Actually, I always feel difficult to concentrate when I'm hungry, or when I'm washed out, when I'm overwhelmed with something, um, or, or with tasks that I have to complete. At such moments, um, uh, my brain just gives in and makes me do at least something to change the situation for the better. This is a possible answer. And one more question that is here. What distractions are bothering you? Uh, uh, what distractions are bothering you in your life? Uh, you can say that all kinds of distractions, but in different situations and at different times. Uh, the ones that um, bother me most and almost in any situation are hunger and anxiety. That's what I could mention. Uh, they just switch my brain off uh, and uh, deprive me of the opportunity to think and uh, concentrate. Deprive of. So, they deprive me of the opportunity to concentrate. Uh, uh, Okay, yes, Vitaly. Uh, but this was the last question, actually. Actually, okay, let me let me try. Um, yes, Vitaly, are you there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So actually, uh, if you heard, I uh, gave answers. Yes, yes. Uh, if you could hear, I gave the answers for two more questions. Uh, if you couldn't hear uh, us, then you can watch it in the recording. The last question is, what distractions are bothering you in your life? To bother, like to disturb. What distractions are bothering you in, a, in your life? Um, in my life, a uh, distraction... Um my life or distraction um, um, st uh, maybe uh, stress because uh, my uh, my, boss, uh, because my, um, uh, my boss uh, mm -hmm. uh, cannot plan uh, right and uh, different pro projects uh, uh, we uh, I have to uh, we, uh, uh, make uh, over time over time uh, make, not uh, eight uh, uh, not do, hours, do, uh, do, do over time, uh, work over time. Uh, 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 and uh, I have to, often I have to work uh, about uh, 20 uh, hours in a day. Uh, hours. And uh, it's very okay. uh, stressful and, and um, very stressful. Uh, broke uh, my health. Uh, broke my health. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can say what what bothers me most is undoubtedly stress, which is related to work. You can build your sentence like this. Uh, it is in the chat. So thank you, Vitaly. Now let's move on to Tatiana. Uh, okay. How do I turn off? So, uh, Tatiana, for you, uh, I, uh, I was showing the presentation while Vitaly was speaking, and you could uh, see some, um, some expressions. Yes, could, could you see them uh, in the presentation? Yes, while? Yes. Okay, so um, please tell us about uh, an activity uh, you do when you're alone in your free time. 
uh, when I was a child, I had uh, <coughs> I, I had a lot of, a lot of uh, free time and uh, I had a large study uh, place which was shared by me and my toys and was saved and my time by them. But the time I was older, I used to play guitar. But nowadays I choose painting nature. I usually go painting or one or twice a week as long as I am available. Uh, I choose uh, calm and peaceful view. Uh, for example, near a shore with a plenty of trees and old-fashioned old buildings. Mm, I have a special bag with um, will paint and brush different kinds of brushes. Also, I have a small easel uh, to help me put my picture there. Uh, and uh, the main thing why I like it is because it uh, because it helps me be mentally strong and. Uh, I'm trying to <laughs> read, uh, and I enjoy uh, this time to uh, search a um, uh, beautiful nature and to uh, make uh, create a picture which I shared um, with my friends. Also, I'm trying to work, uh, involve my family in this activity, and uh, from my uh, view. And from my point of view, they enjoy it. And uh, to sum up, I believe that such activity is a crucial for people to help them relax and forget about jobs during the uh, week. Okay, okay, right. So, um, how do you spend your spare time? Do you mean it's a free time after it's a free time after after work? After work? Yes, yes. Free spare time it's free time. How do you spend your spare time? Um mostly uh if for example after I'm going to home after work, I usually go to the shopping mall to search the uh, wind um uh, windows. Windows. Shop, shop windows. Shop windows. Uh, yes, uh, to search shop windows or to call to my family to meet me and to go to the cafe if some is busy. Okay, right. Uh, here are some ideas well, well, that you can do what you do in your free time. It's in the screen. You will receive this. Um, in your uh, on your computer, so there's an activity. So, uh, what do some young people dislike? Why do uh, some uh, young people dislike to live with older people? Well, in my opinion, it depends of uh, people. Like, for example, uh, the uh, nowadays young people are more. Um, attractive of advertisement and, um, and social media and also uh, mobile phones which I use which I like to use during their all time not just their time but uh, we compare if compared with other people they are they have a old nature old uh, uh, Characters and uh, they used to think uh, that uh, nowadays uh, social media is just discuss uh, young people's opinion and not uh, um, and top uh, <laughs> um, top uh, think young people about um, traditional. About the tradition. Okay. All right. So what you can mention here is a generation. Yes, generation gap. This is what you might uh, want to mention here, uh, or uh, 
uh, young people uh, don't want to listen to edification. Uh, all right, so they don't want to be controlled by anyone. They want to be independent, just as uh, ideas and expressions, if you wish to use them. Uh, or some young people, here's an idiom, they don't want to bend with the wing. Oh, sorry, it's wind, not wing. Uh, to bend with the wind. They don't want to bend with the wind. Uh, right, if you want to mention this. Okay, what do you usually do when you hang out with your friends? Hang out is a spoken expression, it means you spend time. Uh, what do you do when you hang out with your friends? Uh, well, when we meet well, my friends, we usually go to spend our time together and we choose uh, some social activities like to visit a public event or go to swimming or go to theater just to try to where we have an opportunity to share our common views and to create our plan for future. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, here is a list of uh, words that might be used here. Uh, well, the, this actually, uh, <clears throat> uh, there is nothing special about it, so you can mention any type of activity. So your activities are uh, not worse than the ones before. So uh, do you like to spend time uh, on your own or with your friends? You know, it really depends on my mood. I can't say that I'm a moody person, but I, I uh, should have a time when I have spaces on my own, and with, uh, because I should think about my own personal things. But uh, mostly, I prefer to use with my friend, uh, to be with my friends, where I can send my problems, my issues, and I. I have a friend where I can, um, uh, 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 because they are <laughs> the shoulders to cry on, I can share my problems and they can really help me with some issues. Yes, very nice. You can also mention this, uh, sh share my joy and grief, yes. Uh, right, uh, and if, you, if somebody wants to say that you prefer to spend time on your own, you can say, so uh, this helps me to reboot my brain and unwind. Unwind uh, Recuperate and recharge means to restore your energy. Uh, or you can revitalize um, uh, my mind and body. So mention these expressions <clears throat> in the question. Right. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. That's the last question in this topic. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write uh, in the chat. Uh, 